Hello everyone, in this video we will cover the section 14.3. In this section we will define partial derivatives of functions of two variables. We understand how we can take the derivatives of functions of two variables. You know we have two independent variables, so for which variable we can, can we define uh, the derivative of the function? Actually, we can define for both uh, independent variables, so they ca are called partial derivatives of functions of two variables. To define partial derivatives, first we should remember the limit definition, the basic definition of the derivative of one variable function. If you remember, at x is equal to a, you see the definition of the derivative, uh, which is the uh, theoretical definition, the first definition, uh, you, you should remember from calculus 1, at x is equal to a, at some point, the derivative of a function f, defined generally y is equal to f of x by y is equal to f of x, at the point x is equal to a, so it is the limit, actually, as h goes to 0, of the division within here f of a plus h minus f of a over h if you remember or uh, the generally uh, you know the derivative is another function if we don't consider any special point like x is equal to a so it is given as uh, the limit h goes to zero of uh, f of x plus h minus f of x over h this is the uh, this represents another function, which is the derivative of f. Uh, after uh, finding the derivative function of the function f, just writing the special point instead of x, we obtain the result, the value of the derivative at this point. Or directly, by using the first one written here, we can directly find the value of the derivative at the point a. Also, you know, we have the geometric interpretation of, uh, of the derivative. Actually, these definitions are obtained from the geometrical uh, concept. You know, when we consider the graph of some function, for example, like this, uh, the derivative at x is equal to a, you see, x is equal to a, the derivative of f, uh, y is equal to f of x, uh, at x is equal to a gives the slope of the tangent line which is the blue curve you see at x is equal to a this is the geometrical uh, geometric interpretation of the uh, derivatives likewise using this concept we will define partial derivatives for functions of two variables in this section so to define the partial derivatives we will uh, take one of the variables x and y as a constant okay first we turn uh, the two variable function into a one variable function to define a partial derivative so it can be obtained by taking one of the variables as a constant just we consider the two variable function as a one variable function by writing a constant for uh, one of the variables x and y. First, let uh, we let only x vary while y is a constant, let's say y is equal to b, okay? We consider the variable y as a constant, which is equal to b, to define the partial derivative of the function f with respect to x, okay? So our function is uh, z is equal to f of xy f of xy and we consider y as a constant which is equal to b constant so if we consider the variable y as a constant namely uh, we cannot write any number for the variable y uh, just we can write any number for the variable x such that x and y uh, is in the domain of the function f actually we obtain uh, a function of one variable let's say 
uh, this as geofix okay when we write b for y just we have a function of one variable which is depending on the variable x here we have the only independent variable which is x okay since we consider the variable y as a constant so now we can use the limit definition of the derivative for this function since it is a function of one variable so if g has a derivative at a special uh, point let's say a uh, like the definition then we call it the partial derivative of f with respect to x at the point a to b we know already the variable y which is equal to b and then we want to take the derivative of the function g by using the uh, limit definition for functions of one variable written here and so uh, we obtain a result which is called the partial derivative of f which is a function of two variables normally with respect to x at the point a to b and denoted by fx a to b okay this is the notation for the partial derivative of f with respect to x so we have a function g which is a function of one variable depending on x so its derivative is normally you know from calculus one denoted in this form g prime of a and actually this is the partial derivative of f with respect to x at this point and it's denoted by in this form so we have uh, the same uh, concept for them therefore we have the equality where g of x is equal to f of x b from functions of two variables we obtain a function of one variable by taking one of the variables as a constant like y is equal to b and then we use the limit definition for functions of one variable and we obtain the partial derivative of f with respect to x and using the limit definition written here uh, the partial derivative basically uh, is written as since it is a function of one variable which is g of x um, and f of x a to b is equal to limit h goes to zero f of a plus h b namely uh, actually we write g prime of a g prime of a is equal to limit limit h goes to zero g of a plus h minus g of a over h we know already this definition from calculus one uh, this one just instead of f we write g okay and then we use this equality so g of a plus h becomes writing a plus h for x we obtain a plus h to b in this form you see minus g of a then we write a for x so it becomes f of a b f of a b over h and this one is equal to uh, the partial derivative of f with respect to x this uh, equality is obtained by using the limit definition of the derivative of functions of one variable we consider one of the variables x and y as a constant to define partial derivatives to take the partial derivatives okay similarly the partial derivative of f with respect to y at the same point denoted by now f y a to b because we take the partial derivative of f with respect to y is obtained by keeping x fixed namely now we consider the first variable as a constant writing uh, number a okay and finding the ordinary derivative namely uh, we benefit from the definition of the derivative of functions of one variable at the point b of the function writing g of y because now we have a function of one variable which is depending on y instead of so now we have z is equal to f of x y 
Now we consider the variable x as a constant, writing a. So now we have a new function, which is a function of one variable, because we consider the variable x as a constant, which means the function is just depending on one variable, which is y. So by uh, assigning another notation for this function, like this one, bigger G of y, Okay, we don't have x here since it is a number. So g of y is equal to f of a y. Okay, y is the independent variable of this function. And using similarly the definition of uh, functions, uh, definition of the derivative of functions of one variable, we obtain the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Similarly, okay. They are the basic definitions of the partial derivatives of the functions of two uh, variables. So since we have the same definitions for the partial derivatives of the functions of two variables as the uh, definition of the functions of one variable, so the same formulas are valid for functions of two variables to take the derivative, partial derivative of them easily without using the limit definition. For example, the derivative of x squared similarly is equal to 2 times x. We will see in the examples uh, to understand very well. Namely, we use the same formulas to find the partial derivatives of functions of two variables since their definitions are obtained from the definitions of the functions of one variable for uh, derivative. And generally, using the second notation, using the second idea, without considering any special point, we can generalize them to these definitions. The partial, if f is a function of two variables, its partial derivatives are the functions fx and fy defined by uh, the limits h goes to 0, f of x plus h, namely we, here our function is g of x, okay, defined as f of xy by considering y as a constant, okay, and for the second one our one variable function is bigger g of y, which is defined as, again, f of x, y, but we consider the variable x as a constant, where y is a constant here, y is a constant, for the second one, x is a constant. x is a constant. Okay, they are the basic definitions for the partial derivatives of the function f, which is a function of two variables, and they are denoted by fx and fy. Okay, and also, of course, we have some another notations for partial derivatives. If z is equal to f of xy, we have two variable function. So, uh, you this notation f is the basic notation to denote to show the uh, partial derivative of f with respect to x or just we can write fx if we uh, don't consider any special point uh, for f or we can use the Leibniz notation del f over del x okay you know for functions of one variable we use the notation df over dx. When we see this notation, so we understand this is a function of one variable. It is just depending on the variable x. We don't have two independent variables for this function because we have d here. But if we write del f over del x, so we understand this is a partial derivative generally. Or we can write del over del x of f of x, y. This is another form to show the partial derivative, or uh, we can use the dependent variable like dy over dx, you know. When we see dy over dx, we see, we understand this is 
uh, a fu function of one variable, namely we just we write y is equal to f of x for them. Okay, when we see d uh, to show a derivative of function, so we understand the given function is uh, a function of one variable. If we write del f over del x, so we understand this is a partial derivative, f1 or d1f or dxf. Similarly, we can use the uh, notations for the partial derivative of the function f with respect to y. So let's solve an example uh, for understanding very well what, uh, about the partial derivative. So the function f is given as x cubed plus x squared y cubed minus 2y squared. It is a polynomial, you know. And we want to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x at the point 2, 1. And the partial derivative of f with respect to y at the point 2, 1. So to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x, we consider the second variable, the variable y, as a constant. y is a constant. Now, to find the partial derivative of f uh, with respect to x. Namely, y cube can be considered as 2 to the power 3, for example, or we have a uh, 3 squared here. Actually, we have a number here. 2y squared is a number. So what is the derivative of x cubed? It is equal to 3x squared. And here y cubed is a constant. Actually, you can consider this is um, 4 times x cubed. Okay? Instead of 4, we have y cubed here. x squared, sorry. 4 times x squared. Actually, the number 4 is corresponding to y cube because y is a constant. It is a number. Okay, y cube is a number. What is the derivative of 4 times x squared? It is equal to uh, 4 times, actually, 4 times 2 times x. You know, similarly, we write 4 times 2 times x. Okay, just we take the derivative of x squared since y cube is a constant. So therefore, the uh, derivative of the second term is 2y cube x. Minus the derivative of constant, you know, is equal to 0. Therefore, we have uh, generally uh, this uh, result for the partial derivative of f with respect to x so the value of this partial derivative at the point 2 1 we write them for the variables independent variables x and y you see the partial derivative is another function of two variables the, it is depending on the variables x and y so writing 2 and 1 for x and y we obtain the value of the partial derivative at this point which is equal to 16 similarly you can take easily the partial derivative of f with respect to uh, y. Now, x is a constant in this case. Namely, x cubed is a constant. Therefore, its derivative is equal to 0. And the derivative of the second term, so x squared is a constant. Therefore, we write uh, 3 x squared, 3 x squared. Uh, y square okay 3x square y square because x square is a constant like 7y square 7y square so what is the derivative of this function it is equal to actually 7 times 2y 7 times 2y similarly instead of uh, the number 2 we have number 3 for the power of the variable y and instead of 7, we have x squared. Therefore, using this uh, idea, we obtain the derivative of the second term of the polynomial. And the last one, uh, you know, y is 
a variable for the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So its derivative is minus 4 times y. Similarly, writing the numbers uh, to 1, we get the value of the partial derivative of f. Okay. So the important thing in here is to consider the one of the variables of x and y as a constant. Then uh, the derivative can be obtained by using the basic formulas that we know from calculus 1. Of course, we have a geometric interpretation for the partial derivatives in the three-dimensional coordinate system. You know, in uh, for functions of one variable, the geometric interpretation for the derivative is that uh, it represents the slope of the tangent line to this curve at x is equal to a. Namely, the slope of this uh, blue curve is obtained by take uh, by obtaining uh, the value of the derivative of f at x is equal to a. So, uh, to give a geometric interpretation of partial derivatives, we recall that the equation z is equal to f of xy represents a surface, the graph of f, you know, uh, from the section 14.1. Uh, you know, the any point on the surface uh, can be given as x, y, f of x y you know since actually we have three variables x y and z uh, the graph of f represents a surface in the three-dimensional coordinate system and you know for functions of one variable its graph represents a curve like this since we have two variables two components actually x f of x actually x y so now you know uh, we find the partial derivatives of f uh, by taking one of the variables as a constant for example if you consider the variable y as a constant namely y is equal to b so we restrict our attention to the curve c1 this one, uh, blue blue curve. Let's uh, sketch here. This one. Actually, this is a curve on the surface. Namely, when we take any point on the curve C1, actually, this is a point also on the surface. So, this curve is obtained by cutting this surface with a vertical plane such that its equation is equal to uh, its equation is given as y is equal to uh, b y is equal to b you know uh, a to b is located here in the x y plane so b is the point corresponding to the variable y so from here actually we sketch uh, the plane whose equation is y is equal to b okay uh, like this actually so when we intersect this surface with this plane we obtain a curve on the surface which is represented here c1 as c1 bigger c1 Namely, C1 is the intersection of the surface S and the vertical plane Y is equal to B. You know, uh, to Fx, which is the partial derivative of F with respect to X, is obtained by considering the variable Y as a constant. So, uh, when we consider this variable as a constant, so we obtain a plane Y is equal to B. It is passing through the B actually, uh, the point P, which is uh, located on the y axis. Then we obtain a curve, 
and the partial derivative of f with respect to x written as fx is the slope of this curve okay uh, the slope of the tangent line passing through the point a b f of a b okay f of a b written as a b c if we say c is equal to f of a b because it is a point on the surface uh, which is the graph of the function f of two variables x and y so similarly uh, like the uh, functions of one variable you know the derivative represents the slope of the tangent line so the same idea can be used to give geometric interpretation of the partial derivatives when we find the uh, curve which is the intersection of the vertical plane and the surface s uh, and sketching the corresponding tangent line which is t1 uh, passing through this point at this point a b uh, c c is equal to f of a b so its slope is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x at this point similarly if we uh, consider the variable x as a constant like x is equal to a okay now we have a vertical plane which is parallel to the uh, yz plane so the first one this one is parallel to the xz plane so when we write x is equal to a we get a plane which is parallel to the yz plane yz plane okay like this okay this is parallel to the yz plane so we, if we find the intersection of this plane with the surface we get another line another curve on the surface located here okay this is a curve on the surface so similarly the partial derivative with respect to y namely fy fy is the slope of this curve c2 let's say mc2 uh, which is obtained by finding the value of the partial derivative of f with respect to y okay they are the geometric interpretations for partial derivatives uh, in the three-dimensional coordinate system so let's consider another example f x y is given here it is again a polynomial let's find uh, the partial derivatives of uh, f at the point one to one you know uh, for the derivative of f partial derivative of f with respect to x we consider the variable y as a constant therefore the derivative of 4 is equal to 0 the derivative of minus x squared is equal to minus 2x the derivative of the third one is 0 since y is a constant Similarly, uh, the partial derivative of f with respect to y is equal to minus 4 times y because 4 minus x squared is a constant like the number 7 or 10 and so on. And uh, the image of the point 1 to 1 under the partial derivatives can be obtained by using them. Uh, writing 1 for x we get minus 2 and we get minus 4 for the variable for the partial derivative of f with respect to y and here you see the geometric uh, interpretation of the partial derivatives you know this one is actually the parabolaid given here and the vertical plane y is equal to 1 since the given point has the components 1 to 1 this is a vertical plane like uh, this one okay instead of y is equal to b we have y is equal to 1 if we intersect the surface with the vertical plane y is equal to 1 we get a parabola after writing 1 for y we get 4 minus x square in the definition of f you see 4 minus x square minus 2 
So it becomes 2 minus x squared. So this is a parabola. So the curve here, C1 actually is a parabola for this example. C1 is a parabola. And the slope of this uh, the, the slope of the tangent line to this parabola at this point 1 1 uh, the third component is obtained by writing 1 for the variables x and y in the definition of f the third one is actually f 1 1 f 1 1 uh, it becomes 1 4 minus 1 minus 2 becomes 1 so uh, the slope is equal to minus 2 for this parabola okay by finding the value of the partial derivative at this point similarly the second curve namely c2 is another parabola writing 1 for x we get 4 minus 2y square uh, 4 minus 1 minus 2y squared becomes 3 minus 2y squared it is a parabola again and we know x is equal to 1 uh, so c2 is again a parabola again a parabola uh, and the slope of the tangent line at the point written here is equal to minus 4 okay Another example, f of x, y is given as sine x over 1 plus y. So let's calculate the partial derivatives. So we use the chain rule for functions of one variable since we consider the uh, partial derivative like the functions of one variable by taking one of the variable uh, variables x and y as a constant. So here we have actually a composition of two functions. Therefore, we use the chain rule. You know, generally, if you remember, if uh, the function is a composition of two functions, y is equal to f of g of x. If you remember, it's derivative y prime or dy over dx is equal to f prime g of x times the derivative of the inner function the derivative of outer function times uh, the derivative of inner function which is the chain rule what is the outer function for here for uh, the example so sine is the outer function the inner function is x over 1 plus y g of x is x over 1 plus y and f is sine x so with respect to x the partial derivative of f is equal to like the uh, using the formula here first we take the derivative of the outer function the derivative of sine is equal to cosine and we write the inner function here x over 1 plus y times the derivative of the inner function namely the derivative of x over 1 plus y so from here we have the first term cosine x over 1 plus y times the derivative of inner function so we consider the variable y as a constant therefore in the denominator we have a constant it is actually can it can be considered as x over 2 for example or pi or 7 or 11 any number in the denominator what is the derivative of x over 2 so it is equal to 1 over 2 namely we write the same number in the denominator so similarly the derivative of this one is equal to 1 over 1 plus y similarly the uh, derivative of f the partial derivative of f with respect to y using the chain rule is equal to cosine x over 1 plus y which is the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of inner so now x is a constant here namely we have actually 2 over 1 plus y 2 over 1 plus y so what is the derivative of this function with respect to y its derivative you know can be obtained by using the quotient rule according to the quotient rule first we take the derivative of the numerator which is 0 
times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. What is the derivative of the denominator? Uh, 1 plus uh, the derivative of the denominator, namely the derivative of 1 plus y is equal to 1 over the square of the denominator, 1 plus y square. Similarly, instead of 2, we have x. Therefore, we write minus, written here, here, x times 1 is equal to x over 1 plus y to the power 2. So let's find the, similarly, you can find the partial derivatives of f with respect to x, y, and z because it is a function of three variables. It is defined by exponential x, y times ln z. So, uh, similarly, we consider one of the variables x, one of two of the variables x, y, and z to get the partial derivatives of this function. Now, we consider the variable y and z as a constant. So, if we uh, differentiate this function with respect to x, we have actually, if we consider z and y as a constant, so we have e to the power, for example, 2x or 3x, you can write any number to understand very well, times ln, for example, 3. What is the derivative of this one? ln 3 does not affect the derivative, it is a constant. Therefore, we write this, uh, the number again. And the, just we take the derivative of the exponential function, the derivative of e to the power 2x is equal to 2 times e to the power 2x. So instead of 2 writing y, we get the derivative of, we get the, the partial derivative of f with respect to x since we consider the other variables as a constant. Similarly, you can find the partial derivatives with respect to y and z by considering the other variables as a constant. So here we have a function of two variables given uh, implicitly, okay, you know the implicit functions from calculus one. We don't know the explicit definition of the function, but by giving an equation uh, involving the uh, independent variables and dependent variable of the function, we can uh, find uh, some properties of this function, for example, the derivative and so on. So we know a function from this equation z is the dependent variable, x and y are the independent variables. Actually, we have a function here, z is equal to f of x, y, but it is given implicitly uh, with this equation. So to find the partial derivative of this function with respect to x and y, we use uh, the same idea uh, of the functions of one variable. Namely, we consider z is a function. Uh, therefore, we use here a chain rule for the variable z because we know it is a function. It cannot be... Uh, a number, okay, and it is not an independent variable. The independent variables are x and y. So we differentiate implicitly with respect to x, being careful to treat y as a constant. Now, to find the partial derivative of uh, f or z written here with respect to x, we consider the variable y as a constant. Now, y cube is a constant, its derivative is equal to zero, and you don't see y cube or uh, its derivative. So, the derivative of x cube is equal to 3x squared. The derivative of y cube is equal to zero. The derivative of z to the power 3 is equal to, first, we take the normal derivative of this function, 3 times z squared, and then, according to the chain rule, we write uh, the derivative of the inner function, like 
what is the derivative of f square x and we don't know f so it is equal to 2 times f of x 2 times f of x times f prime of x okay similarly we have z to the power 3 first we write 2 times f of x 3 times z square and then we take the derivative of this uh, function which is the inner derivative of the inner function and it is written with Leibniz notation del z over del x since we don't know the explicit definition of the function and similarly uh, for the last term y is a constant like the number 6 therefore we write the constant again and then <coughs> Here we have a product of two functions, x times actually f of x instead of z, or actually we have f of x, y, but we consider it is a function of one variable since we consider the variable y as a constant uh, like g of x, okay? So what is the derivative of this function, x times g of x? So it is equal to 1 times g of x using the product rule times x times the derivative of the second function g prime of x g prime of x therefore we write and we have constant here 6 times y so 6 times y times the derivative of the first function which is x equal to 1 times the second function z and 6y the first function x times the derivative of the second function del z over del x is equal to the derivative of 1 is equal to 0. So solving this equation for del z over del x by eliminating del z over del x we obtain the partial derivative of this function with respect to x okay implicitly. Similarly implicit differentiation with respect to y can be found using the same way. So if f is a function of two variables, then its partial derivatives, fx and fy, are also functions of two variables. So we can consider their partial derivatives, uh, which are called the second partial derivatives of functions. So when we have a function of two variables, you know its partial derivatives are also functions you know, uh, when we take the derivative, you see we have a function, we have another function for the derivative of f, partial derivative of f with respect to x or like uh, this one, this is a function of two variables. Again, we have another function of two variables after differentiation uh, with respect to x or y for a given function of two variables. Therefore, we can consider uh, the derivative of the derivative of functions of two variables which are called the second partial derivatives so these are denoted in this form or in this form fxx fxy can be denoted as fxy the order is very important here uh, this order represents that First, we take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and second, we take the partial derivative of fx with respect to y. You see, first we take the derivative of f with respect to x, and then we take the derivative of this one with respect to y. In Leibniz notation, we can denote the second partial derivatives in this form. Okay? fxy or fyx uh, so sometimes we have a theorem for them uh, to get the equality and fyy okay we take the derivative of f with respect to y uh, two times okay <clears throat> for example find the second partial derivatives of this function in example one we found the first partial derivatives you know so the second partial derivatives or you can see it again directly 
with respect to x, namely we consider the variable y as a constant, x cubed is corresponding to 3x squared. Uh, the derivative of the second term is since y cube is a constant, we write y cube and just we take the derivative of x squared which is equal to 2x, the derivative of last one is equal to 0 and similarly we can find the second one. Again, let's take the derivative of this one with respect to x, so it becomes fxx, so its derivative is, is equal to 6 times x plus the derivative of the second one is 2 times y cube like 5x actually we have here 5x so its derivative is equal to just 5 instead of 5 we have 2y cube similarly uh, the partial derivative of the first one with respect to y is equal to 3x squared is corresponding to 0 the second one is corresponding to, so now 2x is a constant. So what is the derivative of y cube? It is equal to 3y squared, 3y squared. And uh, in front of we have 2x, which is a constant. So the product of them becomes 6xy squared. Similarly, the partial derivative of this one with respect to x can be obtained. Uh, in this form, or uh, the uh, partial derivative of f with respect to y, 2 times is equal to this one. So, we have a, an important theorem for the second partial derivatives, which is uh, called Clairaut's theorem. Suppose f is defined on a disk D, this is the domain of the function f that contains the point A to B. So if the functions f x y and f y x are both continuous on the domain, namely we have the condition here for the second partial derivatives f x y and f y x, they should be continuous on the domain of the function f, then we can consider the equality for the second partial derivative such that um, the independent variables are different, you see, x, y and y, x. Namely, when we have continuous functions for the second partial derivatives, the order of the derivative is not important for functions of two variables. Uh, if we consider their uh, second partial derivatives. So also we can define higher derivatives for functions of two variables. You see to calculate f x x y z and we have a function of three variables here. The, according to the order written here first we find f x which is the corresponding to first one x f x written here namely we have sine sum function with respect to x yz is a constant so first we take the derivative of the outer function cosine uh, 3x plus yz and the derivative of inner function is equal to 3 with respect to x which is written here and then we take the derivative of this one with respect to again x according to the order written here in the example uh, using the chain rule, the derivative of the outer function cosine is equal to minus sine, you see, and the derivative of inner function with respect to x is again 3, the derivative of 3x actually, yz is a constant, its derivative is equal to 0, and according to the order now we take the derivative of the last one according, with respect to y, so the derivative of sine is equal to cosine, uh, and the derivative of inner function is equal to z, z is a constant, x is a constant here, and so on, okay? You can find the last one yourselves. Please try uh, to find the last one, and when you have any question, please uh, send any email to, uh, an email to me. So we have many applications uh, by using the partial derivatives. So from partial derivatives, we obtain partial differential equations. 
partial derivatives occur in partial differential equations that express certain physical laws. For instance, the partial differential equation written here. So here u is a function, let's say f of xy. We have a function of two variables here. u is a function and we know uh, the second partial, the addition of second partial derivatives of the function u with respect to x and y is equal to zero. So it is called the Laplace equation. Solutions of this equation are called the harmonic functions. Uh, they play a role in problems of heat conduction, fluid flow, and electric potential. Okay, we have an important application by using the second partial derivatives <clears throat> show that the function uxy is defined here is a solution of Laplace equation namely we should show that it satisfies the condition written here so how can we uh, obtain this equation for this function given in the example so first we need to find the second partial derivatives and adding them uh, we, and if we obtain zero, we get we say that it is a solution for this equation. So we first compute the needed second order partial derivatives. Uh, the first partial derivative with respect to x sine y is a constant here now. Y is a constant. Uh, so we have just here actually two times exponential x. Therefore, its derivative will be same. And uh, the second partial derivative also uh, will be same uh, according to the property of the exponential function, you know. So we find the first term here. Okay, this is the second partial derivative of u with respect to x. Similarly, with respect to y, the first partial derivative is equal to, now we have uh, 2 times sine y since we consider x as a constant what is the derivative of 2 times sine y it is equal to 2 times cosine y so instead of 2 we write exponential x 2 times cosine y and similarly uh, the derivative of 2 times cosine y is equal to 2 times minus sine y which is the derivative of cosine y and minus is written here and adding them, you see we have zero, which means u satisfies the Laplace equation. Another application is the wave equation. You see here again u is a function of two variables depending on the variables t and x. It describes the motion of a wave from which could be an ocean wave. A sound wave, they are important things, you know. A light wave, a wave traveling along a waiting string. For instance, if uxt represents the displacement of a vi 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 vibrating violin string at time t and at a distance x from one end of the string, you see this figure, this is this represents the displacement uh, of a vibrating violin string at time t uh, x at a distance x from one end of the string satisfies the wave equation it satisfies the wave equation okay so here the constant a depends on the density of the string and on the tension in the string. Verify that the function written here satisfies the wave equation. Just we find the par second partial derivative similarly, you see. And then uh, you see we have uh, this equality, namely a squared, the second partial derivative of u with respect to t uh, is equal to uh, the first one okay therefore we have the wave equation for this example thank you